Hello, everyone. This is Greg, your host of Goddamn GameCube. Welcome to Season 3. If you enjoy listening to our show, consider subscribing to us on YouTube for exclusive video content. Thank you and enjoy today's episode. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Goddamn GameCube. Greg and Beppy are your hosts today. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Our friend Derek is here with us as well. Uh, thank you for joining us. So I did not personally play the um, Legendary Edition, so I am going to let Beppy take it away, and I will let Beppy and Derek go crazy here, and I will interject where necessary. So uh, Derek, thank you for joining, and Beppy, take it away. Sure. So uh, if you're an audience member, you might be wondering why we're going back to Mass Effect so soon. We just did four episodes on it. Um, so as it turns out, I mean, like we kind of did that to hype up for the Legendary Edition coming out, you know, revisiting the old games. But now that the uh, collection is out, um, we had a chance to play it. There have been some improvements, some not so improvements. Um, and it, I mean, I, ultimately, I think it took me around 130 hours to get through the whole thing. Mm. So you're going to pick up some stuff. Mm -hmm. So I have more to say. Hopefully uh, our viewership will tolerate a little bit more time in the Mass Effect galaxy. And um, I, ultimately, I, have, I had a very positive impression of, of, the, uh, of the collection. Um, I, I wanted to get Derek here for sure, just because we missed you. Uh, so much last time I around. Know. It was so upsetting. And uh, and we wanted to give you. I mean, you've played these games probably more than any of us. And I I just like I don't even know. I mean, there's there's so much to say. I, I know you have some very unique things to say. Um, but overall, I think my takeaway from this experience was that I viewed the whole thing a lot more cohesively than I used to. Um, it, it made me, I mean, because the game, especially one plays so much better now, it made me appreciate, uh, different things. Um, uh, did you, do you have any particular things to say about the first one? Well, yeah, because, um, uh, <clears throat> upon, uh, my le legendary edition playthrough, I have now played the first one eight times. Wow. That's yes. bonkers. Uh, and usually, um, I think the only time I didn't 100% it was my first playthrough. Wow. So, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I, I thought... The gunplay was a lot tighter. Um, I thought so. the cover system was a lot better. Uh, the inventory was a lot more organized. I would have liked to even seen it a little bit more, wouldn't you? Like, because I, I just felt like I was sifting through crap like a lot, and I was just like, I just wish I was doing something else. <laughs> yeah, you know, I because I, I I always liked that the micromanaging element of, of the first one. Sure, and I, it was kind of, I don't, on my first playthrough. Like way back in the day when I first discovered the trilogy, I um I was actually saddened to see that uh, the second and third one took that away. And sure, it, it, it it does. A lot of the customization is done for you in in those games, whereas yeah. in the first one you have almost complete control. What I will say though, you do spend a lot of time in the menu, especially yeah. when it comes to the weapon upgrades. And there's there's only really two types I ever really use. Uh, the tungsten rounds for you know making your gun more effective against synthetics, and the shredder rounds uh, to make your guns more effective against the organics. Whenever I have like polonium, incendiary, cryo, or any of those, I just go omni gel, omni gel, omni gel, <laughs> yep. omni gel. Sell them, but, omni gel. But now, so on that topic though, I don't know if you guys remember this because I had also recently gone back and played the original shortly before these new ones came out. When you're in that part of the menu and you're trying to like you're converting all of your things down to omni gel. If you're in the upgrades menu and you're like all the way down the bottom of the list, you hit the Y button. It takes you all the way back up and you mm -hmm. have to keep scrolling oh, down yeah, yeah. every time. Yep. Yes. They fixed that in, in the Legendary yeah, Edition. Finally. I, I do like the, I don't know if you messed around with it all. I, I played a lot with the uh, explosive rounds this time. They overheat your guns really fast, but they're a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I just feel like it kind of conformed to what Greg was saying on our Resident Evil podcast you may not have heard but that it's, it's like a lot of just objectively better things and you have to keep like cycling out the irrelevant ones like oh, yeah, that, that yeah, make yeah, it worse sure. that, that was kind of a pain in the ass but um did you like the updated uh, Mako controls uh, absolutely yeah that, that, I thought it was great that, that booster is a godsend <laughs> oh, how, yeah. was, how was that with the updated Mako controls because it's like you know really like a, a derided part of the first you, game. You can play with the old controls if you want. Oh, my oh God. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, there's a setting. But they, they added a, a boost function in addition to the jump. So it's a lot more... 
it's it's intermittent, but you can manipulate it to make it perpetual. If as if as long as you jump after the boost runs out, you're you maintain the momentum of cool. the boost, and then by the time you land, the boost is recharged again, so you can just keep. Yeah, they don't they don't dick you around with the balance too much. I like oh, that sure. a lot. Although I never I never really I never hated the Mako the way the the rest of the fan base. Did. I didn't either, but people I, hate it. I know. I honestly, uh, you get used to it after a while. Yeah. Because uh, uh, you know, toward the, the the end of my last few playthroughs, I got like pretty good at the shitty controls. I mean, I'm not <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say that they're good. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's, but I mean, I don't think they're that bad. I am with like, you. Yeah. That's what makes but, this a great remaster is that you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. Where if mm-hmm. you really like the old controls, you yeah. can have them back. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I didn't love them. But th- there is one thing that they still haven't fixed, though. The thing that's, I think, to me, the thing that sucked the most about, or still sucks the most about the Mako is when you drive, like, up a wall, like, at a 90-degree angle. Like, yeah, even yeah, if, yeah. It, if there was no rampage to make that happen, yep. instead of just crashing the way you would normally would, you go... Yep. Yeah. And just kind of you, slip your way up. Exactly. Yep. It's, it's yep. so... Because it happens on Pharos and on Ilos. Well, whenever you have to drive down hallways, it Did, happens. Yep. And it's it still happens in the legendary edition. Interesting. It's it's funny because I was gonna bring up that a lot of things are tightened up and fixed, but I did encounter some new bugs that I never encountered before. Did you did you run into any bugs? No. Um. There, well, there was one instance. I, I was on a side quest where uh, somebody used stasis on me, and it took way too long for me to get back up. <laughs> yeah. But but eventually I it, I did. Sure. Um, that par- remember that um, that paragon glitch I told you about recently? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's still in there. I was can you, not, can you, for, for I was, the audience. Can you explain how that works? Okay, so I, I was elated to discover that they did not fix this. Greg and I were talking about this sort uh, somewhat recently. How there's that conversation on Pharos that you need twelve charm for. Yes, and if, and if you want to play the planets in the the order, like the optimal order, and what which in my opinion would be Therum. And then Ferris and Novaria are interchangeable, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, doing Vermeer before any of those is a, the, the very thought of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I can't fathom. Me either. And yep. so I think without this glitch, you would not be able to get the 12 charm for yep. that conversation without doing everything else first. So here's here's uh, here's what it is. So I forget the name of the planet, but uh, it's, it's one of those side quests where it only gets triggered if you're exploring the galaxy and you click on the planet that it's on. Um, it's it's the one where you have to find the lost data module yes. from those monkey-like creatures. Yeah, I remember you talking to me about this. Yes, so uh, you get renegade points if you kill the monkeys to find it, uh, and you get paragon if you uh, just touch the monkey. <laughs> if you touch click- the monkey. Yeah, you, yeah, if you click on the monkey uh, without having killed any of them. Uh, however, once you do eventually find the monkey who has it... You, you, you just you, keep racking it well, up. What, 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 what you have to do is you hit A... You get the six Paragon points and then immediately save and reload your game. Uh, so at that point, you already have the data module from that monkey, but the game forgets you already clicked on him. So then you just keep hitting <laughs> A repeatedly and, and getting six Paragon max points paragon. Per, per per button press. Got it. So, yeah. It's a good exploit. And it's still in the game. Yep. They, did, they didn't wow. fix it. I was so happy. You know what's know. crazy, though? Yeah. You were talking about doing Vermeer like out of order in quotes, but like it's so cool that there's like recorded dialogue and stuff for... If you chose to do that, that's what I really like about the first game. Something I noticed a lot about it is mm-hmm. that they they plan for these eventualities in like interesting, believable ways. Um, I did like some other like just generally really impressive things about the first game was like um, the codex, like reading it all over again and realizing like all the you know it's it's very like airtight lore. You know they thought of everything. It's like it's it's not obviously you know it's. It's science fantasy, but it feels very much like a believable, like all the all the concepts feel like they could exist. And um, and, you know, just just certain things about like the Turians have they wear the war paint and they, you know, politicians, sometimes they take it off and they call them like barefaced or something mm-hmm. just and it's yep. like a pejorative term. So it's just like just really inventive, like world building that I, I haven't seen to that extent in a game like this. And I um the voice acting too for its time i thought was really impressive um especially this is my first time going through all three as female shepherd Mm -hmm. very impressive voice acting very just kind of like hitting all the emotions perfectly very in context um i before i get too far i did want to bring up the 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 glitches were very few and far between but one time i fell through the floor on vermeyer and it was very funny to watch 
And the other time, <laughs> the other time that I can remember is um, Thane's loyalty mission, where you have to like uh, shadow his son or whatever, and and prevent him from assassinating the guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just at this point, where for some reason it went on like fast forward, and it was just like. <laughs> Everything was move. All the the dialogue was moving very fast, and then I got into the cutscene where you fail. You know, like if yeah. you let him do it, entropy and, wins. And, and, <laughs> entropy yeah. always wins. And, and even that was just like it was someone like smashing X. I'm like, wait, what? What happened? But I, I was able to reload and and but it's you know, so it, it didn't ruin the experience. It was just kind of funny that like new glitches you know existed where right. they didn't before. It, it, at least the Veneni, the well, sorry, Benezia boss fight works now. Oh no, my God, yeah, dude. yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't run into any trouble there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did. I mean, because we we talked Mass Effect two to death about like the pros and cons and everything. But I, I something I wanted to bring up is how every time I play it, it's like very addicting, and it's like it's something about like the 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 mission structure is very like episodic, like TV show. Like you can you can play it and feel like you accomplish something for like you know like forty minutes or whatever. And it's like I found it very like just like engrossing. I don't. Do you feel the same way? About I get that? I get that from Mass Effect One. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, not so much from Two. Okay. But we'll, we'll get to that. I just feel like it's like the missions are very bite sized, so it's easy to do and like you know or like binge, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's just every every sort of quest and side quest feels like it's serving a purpose, and that's something that I feel like a lot of games are missing. Um, the only. <laughs> The only thing that really, like, really brought it down for me was the scanning planets. I'm like, this is, we should have done something about this. Mm -hmm. It's, like, very much, I feel like each game sort of has a low point where it's like, I wish I was just playing the game again. And for two, it's definitely this. I feel like they should have, you know, just, just indulge me here. Imagine it was, like... You only had to scan, like, say you had a rich planet, a planet rich in resources. You should only have to scan it like four times, not like six to, to completely like strip it of its resources. Uh, uh, and, well, here's the thing. I mean, uh, I think in, in many cases, that's probably all you would need. But if you're a completionist like me, I, I can't not scan the planets to depletion. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, but like, I mean, you do need a certain amount for like your upgrades and there, stuff. There, there, yeah. And because uh, platinum is annoyingly rare. Yeah. Um, same with element zero. Yeah. I, yeah. I always I remember the, the, I the fact that anywhere. like every planet had way too much palladium and iridium yes. was so annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, overall, that was like my big kind of takeaway was like, shit, I, can this just be done? Like, I, I don't want to like mm-hmm. grind for these kind of resources exactly because the, the equivalent to that with mass effect one i i'd say is just um just driving the yeah the makeup. yeah i felt but, the but, same but, way. But, I, but i but i like that though i love mm-hmm. exploring planets in that thing which I, is, I, I, which I prefer is, it to yeah exactly scanning, but it's, it's, i mean i think yeah. we talked about that before like um, when we were doing the original trilogy we were having some back and forth about i don't necessarily find like navigating the mako and those cookie cutter planets fun but it's very like uh in universe and yeah. it makes a lot of sense for those to be sort of uncharted and there's not much there yeah, it's, it's very very relaxing i don't know i, I yeah. love i love the, the the scenery like a lot of the planets look really cool right like, there's that one where like the it's all red and then there's that bright blue planet yep. over there yeah i mean I, it, I mean it's 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 less of like a it's less reductive than just looking at a menu and being yeah. like all right well, oh yeah it's, get it, that it, little it felt like you were really exploring a universe it's another basis on which i am still a, a mako defender even, mm-hmm. even in terms of the originals mm-hmm. um uh, so i on on that point um three i thought overall better than i remembered but there's a lot of things that i wish they had fixed or at least touched up in some ways that they didn't um <laughs> the citadel is definitely my my low point for that game um i think mm-hmm. it is unholy like in how unpleasant it is to navigate and quest it, it, it's like I, I i came up with a solution in my head like bear with me here okay so you have like instead of doing what they did we've talked about it before with where you just go and like you overhear stuff and you you oh by the way i heard you uh heard you were looking for this this sacred artifact that that means a lot to your culture will you help us like just like in the middle of like a crowded thoroughfare just (laughs) saying that to somebody it's fucking insane so i'm like so what if they just had like you can only get like okay um because there's a lot there's a lot of stuff in that game like a lot a lot of recorded dialogue a lot more than i expected there was a lot more kind of 
touching back on stuff, just not in like significantly like meaty ways. So I was thinking like, okay, so how about we save some time and money here and we get the actors for like Udina and Bailey to like give you these these quests like mm -hmm. like oh you know the the Turians need such and such a thing you know can you take a look at that next time you're in this system or whatever right and it, you can you can solve all your problems right you just turn them into him mm -hmm. and and be like you know what these are like embassy missions or whatever exactly yeah and instead of having this bizarre I oh, I overheard you were looking for this really rare thing what? yeah I happened to find <laughs> it while scanning a and that's like even like more insulting because yeah. it's like it's just a carryover. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just hate that it's like it really should have been closer to one where it's like a couple big interconnected maps. You mm -hmm. feel the same way, like, yeah, like and you have to like explore a place to find the thing, right? But, but you know, it's and the, the worst part about the side quests in Mass Effect 3 they'll be in your menu long before you can even complete them. Yeah, uh, dude, it's so, so annoying. They'll be, uh, the journal, I mean, not the menu. Yes. But, um, and this is one thing I was really, and afterwards, really, too. Yes. Uh, this is one thing I was really, really, really hoping they would fix in the Legendary Edition, but they uh, apparently they didn't. Um, because the, it, it just even in terms of the originals, the journal is a huge, like a massive downgrade from the way it was in, in the first two games. Mm -hmm. The first yeah, two games, yeah. all your missions, you had your, your missions, assignments, it was all very, very well organized. You, you would click on one of them, they'd expand to like the multiple bullet points uh, that you have or have yet to complete. This though, there's none of that. Like all, the the missions and the assignments are lumped into like one category. None of them expand if you click on them. Uh, and it they, because at least in the first two games, when you had gotten um, you, you had gotten so far, if you highlighted a particular mission, it would show like what you have to do the next, or what you've points. done. So yeah, right, it would show your progress. Mm -hmm. This does not. So what 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 would end up happening is you would walk by somebody, you'd overhear that thing, you know, that they need a thing from a place. You get the quest. Uh, but then at that point, the system that you're supposed to get the thing from is not yet available on the galaxy map. And right. but even when it becomes available and you scan the planet to get the thing and you try to go back to the Citadel to give it back to the person, they're not there for you to give it back to them until you've completed, uh, you've gotten so far in the main, in the main story. Main quest, yeah. right? Or like, you can the, miss them completely. The, the, the amount, yeah, there's there's that too. And the, then it remains in your journal for the Forever. rest of the game, which is <laughs> yeah. infuriating if you're a completionist yeah. and you want to beat the game having nothing left there mm -hmm. to do. Because the amount, the amount that I took to Google during like my most yeah. recent playthrough of three was infuriating. It's infuriating. The, the fact that like that is, I think, probably top three or maybe top five uh, gaming sins. Uh, of all time the fact that i should not have to take to the, the wiki as often as i did just to complete menial well, side quests i did that like, so often too when i was playing the you know the original mass effect mm -hmm. 3 where i was like can i just not do this yet like i don't understand exactly this. and like, it's and it's and the side quests are so meaningless as it is i just feel like i'm wasting my time it's just like numbers on a chart yeah, like yeah. The, the the amount of times i go back to the citadel to try to give those things back to those people it was it was all for you're nothing you're just kind of like running laps yet. trying to like cuz it's they they will sometimes show the you know the npc you're looking for marked on your map or like at least their name and what region of the map they're in but not always and um it, it sucks because like you were saying but it also works the opposite way too where you will scan a plant and have something you'll have nobody to give it to for a while and it's just kind of like i don't know it, it's so weird because I, I, I the biggest biggest problem for me this time was like right off the bat there was something like you need to when you're on Eden Prime like uh, mm -hmm. finding Javik yep, like that there, happened to me last th time as there's well there's some like things you need to collect and if you don't get all of them it'll just stay and I'm like well I can't fucking go back to Eden Prime can't like I, you know it's, it's just it's weird I know it, it, it uh, it, it caused me to just bow out by the before the the end of my last. It just just couldn't couldn't take it exactly mm -hmm. right because there there was one playthrough of Mass Effect one I did where um. There were a, a few side quests I couldn't complete because I I'd gotten too far through the game and I couldn't go back to the. Mm -hmm. there, there were for some reason there were planets I couldn't go back to, and that was all that was my fault clearly. Um, but I got to Ilos and I'm there were these things in my menu that I sorry the journal that I couldn't get rid of, so I straight up started the game all the way over. Yep. I just I drives you crazy. I know. Yeah. I, I can't I can't handle that shit. I I pretty much like. That did suck. I overall, like, I, I did find myself enjoy. Like, once I kind of accepted that 
this was not the way I would have told this story. And I was like, it was their, it was their call, you know, like they did it, they did it this way. There were certain things I would have done very differently, but I think, I think the sheer concept of the game is good. Um, where you have kind of this ongoing, it's, it's, it's a nice like twist. It's not, I'm glad they didn't just, you know, redo one or two, you know, it's, it's has its own kind of tone and flavor. Um, they reincorporate a lot of stuff that I liked. There's just some really stupid stuff. Um, I, you know what it was? I think overall, I, I was thinking about how, how much the, uh, DLC adds to these, like two and three, especially. Mm. And I, I wish they had like laced them in just a little bit better because it's uh, what I like uh, very often in these games is going back to your crew members once you do like a major mission and checking in with them, seeing if mm -hmm. they have anything interesting to say. That's that's also like I brought people along certain missions just to see mm -hmm. what they'd say. Yeah. Um, and it's like when you do like you do something crazy, like you overthrow the shadow broker and right. like you go back to Joker, he has nothing to say about it. It's right. like like uh, just a okay. little, I, you know, it's obvious like at the time they couldn't get all the voice actors back. Right. But but it's just it just takes you out of it just a little bit where they, they say they have something to say all the right. time, except right now. Mm -hmm. What bothered me about the Shadow Broker quest is uh, if you like brought Garrus back with you. Sorry, if you brought Garrus along with you, there's no dialogue between him and Liara at all. Oh, right. really? Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, interesting. I, I did. I, I forgot a lot of the because you know I've I've played the vanilla versions of the game so often I forget like all like the Omega one is crazy like all the characters and everything yep. really cool. Um, I, I in general just a, just a very strongly positive experience. But I it did get me thinking about like if I could only change a couple things like what would they be? And number one is having a like paragon and renegade path for three like a very disparate kind of experience where you're not just it's not just you know a change in tone in your dialogue i'm thinking like it should have really been maybe the end of two is what does this but like imagine if you will like one where shepherd remains with the alliance and one where they remain with cerberus right, right? You're asking for a lot, but I understand. I know, but yeah. but here's the thing: it's it's kind of like, it's it's just a bigger version of Star Fox. Oh sure, where you have Sector X versus Sector Z, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's it's essentially like like so, you would play on all the same planets, but you would have different objectives. You'd have mm -hmm. different like uh, you know enemy Got palette it. swap or something. And I feel like because it would have been such a good opportunity. You know what else? I, I hate Kai Lang still. Of course. I, it's terrible. And I, but I was thinking about the whole clone subplot, and I was like, if had they played this straight, it would have been kind of cool. Where it's like, okay, so if you if you have, um, let's say you're you're playing um, a Paragon, then they could have Cerberus was could have been like, well, we have a contingency plan, and then bring mm -hmm. out your your clone if they're all fucked up or something, and so if you if you go a renegade path, then then you the same role is fulfilled. It's kind of like a Pokemon thing where mm -hmm. like, you know, it's it's kind of it, the game plays itself around you. Sure. And the original plan for that was to have Caden or Ashley be kind of hunting you down. And I, I just can't get that out of my head. It's such a good idea. And it's just like it would have. Oh my god! And and I was I was really honestly tra forgetting all the bullshit around the game. I was really enjoying it right up until the ending. Mm -hmm. And I just, I still like I I don't I don't know. Do do you want to do you want to like vent some 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 pains oh. about three? Yeah. <laughs> just really quick. I, I love how we're like we're completely off the legendary edition now. <laughs> no, but I mean like it yeah. it, it made because I I think um whoever is running the show now was like. Maybe it'll get people to reappraise three a little bit because it, it was unfavorable at the time. And I did reappraise it. And for the most part, it's held up better than I thought it would. But I, there's still these things that just really drive me crazy. About are you, it. Well, course, are you it, saying it, it like it definitely looks a lot better now, which sure, is right. one of my issues with the original is it somehow looks worse than two, even it, though it, it came plays, out two years it later. It plays very smooth. The only the only um, performance issues I ran into were the cutscenes. I don't know what you played it on. But for some reason, the cutscene, like the you know, I'm talking about like the yeah. pre-rendered cutscenes, mm -hmm. they just ran like at half the frame rate as everything else, and the launcher was was awful. Like the PC uh, Origin launcher, it, it ran terribly. 
Hmm. Um, but everything else was very smooth. But uh, Greg, you were going to ask something. No, I was going to ask, like, are, are you saying that you thought, like, the Legendary Edition was a missed opportunity? Like, did you really want them to revamp stuff? Or are you saying it was really just an opportunity to reappraise what's already there? <laughs> no, no. Well, but I think what he was saying is reappraise the creative choices behind okay. the ending, especially. But I think ultimately... I, I would have, it's a little bit of the Demon Souls thing where I would have liked to have seen a little bit more kind of chopping. Oh, of, sure. So you're saying like if you have a chance to, to re-release this, do something with it. Yeah. And yeah, it, sure. it, it reviewed very well and deservingly so. It's a very, like it perf like I said, mm -hmm. performs very well. But I, I, I can't help but think like, well, they're not going to re-release it again. I don't think. Oh, sure. Not for so a this long is kind of the end of the line. Well, yeah. So... Yeah. Cause, and there, there's just some things you can't change. I mean, it, I, I mean, I, 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 right? Because I mean, I, I have to applaud them for being um, faithful to the originals. Like they didn't change any story points or anything yeah. like that. Although, it, as much as I wish that they could, I, I think it would have been unethical to do so. Uh, they but did change one thing. I don't know if you know about this. There's a um, and one of the side quests in Mass Effect One on one of the planets, there's like an anti-human character who yeah. is human, uh. and so they changed him to a Turian. I'm oh, like, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. good, makes you know, sense. All right, it was just like a mistake. Back oh, up. yeah, pretty yeah. Crazy. I, didn't I, some news websites I did covered? That. That. I think it's the one with the, with the bomb in the mine. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah I yes. remember that. It's pretty yeah. cool. Oh my god. That's yeah, I, 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 more I, I of never that. Thought, I never That's thought. That's what of I that. want. <laughs> yeah. Make some corrections yeah. if there are some mistakes here. It's Hell okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Do you do you have anything that you really need to get off your chest about oh, this trilogy? Because oh, that's why I invited you here. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Upon re revisiting the series, the, the both the originals and and the legendary edition, right. um, I've come to the conclusion that the first one is great. And then it's all downhill from there. <laughs> and you and so, I are in alignment here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Mass Effect 2, great game. You know, on its own, I don't think it does its job as the second act of a trilogy. Sure. sure. And, and a lot of the problems I have with 3, like story-wise, I've realized that 2 is to blame for a lot of them. Because the problem with Mass Effect 2, um, you know, again, let, let me get all the good things out of the way. Sure. Looks beautiful. I think, you know plays better than the original one at least mm -hmm. combat's much still, smoother still it's Char just a little I bit know. better now a little bit yep and uh character development yeah. world building excellent there is no main plot mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, so and, that's my problem and, 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 with I, but with that i i mean two things so the this the central plot of mass effect 2 is entirely self-contained yep. the collectors are introduced at the beginning of that game and by the end they are dispatched hardly ever mentioned again in mass effect 3 um, and even then, there are only three short missions in which you fight them. Even the suicide mission at the end took me a half hour. Yeah. Right. Um, and beyond that, it's essentially just an anthology of short stories. Yeah. I mean, all. I mean, again, excellent character development. I, I love all the little side missions you go on, the places you go. Very, it's very immersive. It's it's all great. The problem with Mass Effect Two is that nothing, none of the events of that game get the Reapers any closer to the galaxy. Sure. sure. So yeah. when so when they just sort of show up at the beginning of three, I'm like, huh, that, that's weird. Yeah, why I, is I, this I happening? Thought, I thought they were trapped in dark space. Here's it, here's the thing it, because you you got me thinking about that. They make it very clear in the first game that there is no other way. Yes. Like but like they 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 lay down the law pretty fucking firmly, and I don't know if like. I was like, is is uh, Vigil just kind of limited in his perspective? Or because I mean, that's how they excuse it later on. Like, why didn't Vigil tell us about the Crucible? Oh, well, it was compartmentalized. And I'm like, okay. At that but, point, because at that point, it's your own head cannon is the only thing preventing the story from falling sure, apart. Yeah, sure. And, that's and you a, brought that up before. Yeah. And I, I don't um, I that's 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 how I see too is more of just fucking around in the universe. And I like that a lot. I think I think a video game is a good way to explore it's just it's a shame that the, the main plot is just very eh, just, really the payoff is my biggest problem oh with my it. god and, and this is where they if they had just framed it a little differently it, it could have solved almost all these problems well because he because you because i i've said this a number of times what the fact that there is no <laughs> they don't tell you why they're building the human reaper when you find it Edie's just kind of like I don't know. I that, don't have to That's, that's the other thing I so, noticed is that the first game you 
you're always allowed to ask questions and there's usually a pretty good answer for the most part besides the stuff that they were clearly like we'll we'll you know reveal that later um but in two like it's kind of like the whole why why were they doing this i don't know like they don't they don't like you can ask a couple of questions but nobody will have the answer and, he, and here's what it should have been that human reaper should have been sovereign's replacement because they now need they still need somebody to mm-hmm. open the citadel relay and usher sure. in the invasion because mm-hmm. here's the thing after you defeat the final boss in mass effect 2 harbinger says he says to the collector general before he like shuts him off it's like you have failed we will find another way right. so in my head canon i'm like okay so he probably means they're gonna find another way to get the get the citadel open but we don't know that for sure Right. So like it, it really, we'll find just, a, find a way to do it, what? We'll just drive. It'll find, take six months. Like, but, like, <laughs> but, like, but like find another way to do what? What were they doing with the collectors then? Right, right, right. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what, if, if they were on their way to the galaxy anyway, then what was the whole point of that? <laughs> I, right. <laughs> Oops. Uh-oh. I don't like. I, I my personal like you know it's hindsight is twenty twenty of course, but I, I'm thinking about like I would have said that they were taking all these humans to work on a new back door in the middle of the galaxy instead of, you know, on the outside or whatever. Um, and, and like the reason why humans only were being targeted is because no, it's like, it's like, it's an awful thing, but there's a lot of crime that befalls, um, native Americans. And because they're on like, sort of like this unprotected land. And it's like hu- humanity is considered that way in the galaxy in Mass Effect because humanity is like, like they, there's a lot of lore in like the codex and stuff about how humanity is expected to prove itself by colonizing the Traverse or whatever. It's also in Batarian space, but the council won't protect them. So no one is like taking these disappearances seriously. So I'm like, it makes part like even if you're you're foregoing all like the genetic code bullshit, like it still makes sense. You could a couple little little tiny turns in the plot, you could have made it make perfect sense. And it's just such a shame that it's just like this goofy, giant Skeletor thing at yeah. the end of the day. But like, you have to imagine like the like what end to that, what, what, like what that would have looked like. What like what was it gonna do? Fly around space like, like Superman. Superman? Yeah. Like. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, so now to, to Mass Effect 3. Uh so the fact that they just sort of show up uh against you know against what had been previously established in the first game. Uh I I actually I mainly fault Mass Effect 2 for that. How, although that is that is not to say that Mass Effect 3 couldn't have done some some things uh, on its own to try and rectify these issues. Like maybe just a few throwaway lines here or there to justify why a- after after all that they decided to just invade the galaxy manually <laughs> uh, so, but you but you'd have to like you'd have to do a pretty good job trying to explain a way that they they didn't do this despite the fact that they I had all, always had the option to do so so and so here's here's my rationale for that cuz the other infuriating thing about the third game is the fact that you can just use the Citadel and the mass relays freely when it was mm-hmm. previously established by Vigil that when the Reapers invaded, they shut all of that shit off right. to isolate each system from one another so the Protheans well, couldn't, couldn't go back and forth. So so here's my justification for that was the, re- the reason the Reapers need to invade through the Citadel is because it allows them to gain at control of the whole relay network. So only after they've exhausted every possible option there, they decided, okay, fuck it. I guess we'll just invade manually, but it, it, it'll mean we can't shut the relays off and, they, sure. and therefore the invasion will be much well, harder. And that's why this is a last resort for us. If they had just had a few throwaway lines that explained these things away, it would have been so much better. But uh, the other one final thing, I'll let you. Uh, I'll have my my day in court. I'll, ter- I'll turn things. <laughs> I'll turn it over to you in a bit. The problem is because th- this was my head cannon up until the end. I'm like, okay, there must be a reason they can't control the citadel. But at the end, when the elusive man tells the reapers, yeah, they're they're about to use that for the crucible. They the reapers move the citadel to Earth. Like, oh, okay, so they could have seized control of the Citadel all along, but didn't for some fucking reason, even though it's the heart of galactic civilization. You think if they could have done this all along, they would have hit there first. But why? But they don't. Right. They that, did it for the Protheans. That and was, they just happened to do it right now. I, <sighs> that was a big question on my mind the whole time I played this one. But I, I something I didn't pick up on in Mass Effect 1 is um, at the end of the game, Vigil talks about how 
the 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 the, the kind of uh, thing that the Protheans leave behind for hope for the next cycle is they deactivate the signal uh, that the Reapers um, send out to the Keepers, and so they you're already on Plan B. Uh, in Mass Effect 1 because they can't control the keepers anymore so that's why they have to do all the conduit business so I, that was my reasoning for assuming why they didn't why they weren't able to control the relays to begin with however I don't I, I like you I do not understand why the Citadel is not like priority number one like it's like especially considering that they probably knew what the crucible was and they just you know like all right so let's not just give them a let's just take out the citadel like like that like a machine would do that you know they wouldn't leave it for later i don't know it's it's bizarre it's 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 just a huge kind of they wanted their scene and they got it moment um where it's like oh well now the citadel is is in play so I don't know, man. It's it's odd. It just seems so contrived. I think it's they just didn't want to have it, so you didn't. Because if, if Mass Effect Three made sense, you wouldn't be able to use the Citadel the whole game. Sure. Right? Um. Although again, it's like I I do I, I I do think you could justify being able to use the relays um by by means of like what I just laid out for for you two. Yeah. Uh. It just it sucks that they don't do any of this. Like. <sighs> Like the fact that oh my god! Like after you defeat Kai Lang, and that you find out that uh, only only now have the Reapers decided they're gonna move the Citadel to Earth. Uh, it's only when they find out that you're about to use it to complete the Crucible that they do this. It's like, but like why? If they could, you could have done this all along, why didn't you do it before? I will say there were certain things in Mass Effect Three that I really loved. Um, that I didn't really kind of notice before, probably because I was so disappointed. <laughs> but I like the the scene where you go into, you finally are in the elusive man's office in person, and he appears via hologram, and he says, "You're in my chair." I was like, "Oh, that's cool! Yeah, like that's a really I, I, neat I like scene." That. And the the whole yeah, that whole part is is really cool. Um, I felt like they could have done more with the Shepherd. Am I really alive? Plot that's kind of just like it's like on a terminal. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Um, I don't know. It it may, it calls into question the whole like Lazarus thing. And it's yes, like, how, I remember. How I, I, I remember. Yeah, I felt like that. That really had they gone a little bit further with that, that would have been, been bonkers. But um, how? Okay, so here's here's my my big question. I have two big questions left. Okay. Number one, how would you have done the ending differently? Oh boy, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's a lot. Um, but I, I mean, like, you, okay, so you have you have finite resources. How do you how do you make how do you handle it like if, the very end? If I could change one thing, sure. Okay, I would reverse um, the the unlockability of the three options you have. I would make destroy the one you have to work the hardest to get. Whereas if if you do none of the side quests, synthesis, which is the clear shittiest option, is the <laughs> yeah. only one you can do. And then next is control. And then if you you know get enough war assets and do all the, all the things you are able to do what you had set out to do from the very beginning destroy the fucking reapers the fact that this is painted as the worst option is appalling to me where it, where clearly it is the right thing to do like you you convince the elusive man to the kill him where you survive yeah and it's it, it, like you in the previous scene you would convince the elusive man to kill himself only to find out that you could have done <laughs> Like he was right the it whole time. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I love like how like like nonchalant they are about it. Like, well, <laughs> the elusive man was right after all. <laughs> Shit. He's, he's like dead already. <laughs> it's really like a like almost like a half in the bag kind of thing. I like, know. oh, Miss Old Mr. Elusive Man was right the whole time. <laughs> oh man. I, I did I loved that that in that the before the very final scene, which I, I have a few things to say about, I liked that there was a scene between you and your sort of two father figures in a way. And it was kind of grappling for you. It was one last sort of Paragon renegade sort of, you know, it, it's, it, I, I like it like conceptually. Like, I think, I think yeah. that was a good idea, but then they, they kind of like layer on another. Well, that's not the real ending. G Greg, which ending did you pick in magic three? I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Is it just, just, just a different color. It's all right. Back in the day. I don't remember sure. at all okay. which one that I picked. Did you did you uh do you remember which one you picked this time around? Because mm -hmm. you played it recently, right? I did play it recently. I think I picked destroy. Yeah. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's the only 
or that and refusal that and refusal are the only two acceptable right. options I, I just like i feel like it's very kind of the way they they it, it's very obviously the, the the child the hologram is obviously it's a reaper intelligence like it can like i think the 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 undersea uh dlc which i loved um explains that it's it can it is the central intelligence of all the reapers right okay um and it it's it's clearly acting out of self-interest and it, it's kind of it, it's a weird situation because it it makes you question your free will and it's like well well you know no matter what you're gonna build robots eventually and they're gonna turn on you and it's like maybe we'll learn something from this i don't know like it, it kind of makes it very hopeless like it's like well you you well you got to figure something out because this is just gonna keep like maybe not but but, but it's it stands in direct contradiction to if that is if you successfully um got the quarians and the geth to put aside their differences like, yeah. it's in direct contradiction with you ending that conflict oh yeah yeah uh because it's, it's like well they figured it out you know exactly um and it's also it's just oh my god fine so if I could change a second thing. <laughs> <laughs> if I could change, go. if I could change a second thing about the ending, it would just be to remove that whole thing entirely, not not even change it. Because yeah. I I loved how when you meet with Vigil at the end of the first one, and you ask it, um, so what do the Reapers get out of this? Like, why do they keep repeating this pattern of genocide over <laughs> and over? And he goes, the Reapers are alien unknowable perhaps they need slaves or resources more likely they are driven by motives and goals organic beings cannot hope to comprehend in the end what does it matter your survival depends on stopping them not in understanding them and okay. that to me is perfect I, I know I fucking love his voice I, but, I have like tears in my eyes I know. right now <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, but it's perfect. I the, I think the Reapers are cooler the less you know about them. Uh, it's it's like most things where where the mystery beats what you're shown. But I I uh, I really I, I have to agree, and I also have to say that I thought it was it would have been maybe more interesting if the choice was made for you based on your previous choices, where it like leads up to you know like a, a Fallout New Vegas thing mm -hmm. where it's like the world this is how you left the world this is what your decisions were leading up to the whole time just to make it a little bit more impactful um <laughs> so I, I did have and that kind of leads to my last big question is Derek you've seen the trailer for uh the next game right like I, the, I saw like um the very like limited teaser trailer yes I just, yeah I just saw like you see like the back of Liara's head and yeah, that's yeah. It. She's, like, uh, wearing you a cloak. see her like in profile. Yeah, and, she kind of looks. It's like, like snowing. She's like wearing a cloak or something. Yeah, I saw it like a, like a year ago. So I just wanted to thinking about this now and having it all like fresh in our heads. I I did read a theory that I thought was interesting. I I kind of assumed it was going to pick up fairly soon after three left off, but now I'm not so sure because someone said, well. She, she, Asari lived to be hundreds of years old like and, a thousand. It, yeah. and, and it could be, you know, centuries later. And she is also kind of wearing like a matriarch Benezia kind of outfit a little bit. So okay. maybe she's in the matriarch stage of her life. And I thought that would have been kind of interesting to kind of imagine like, OK, so who would still be around at that point? Like if that do you think that maybe that's what they're going to do? It's possible. I mean, um, if doesn't that also if, like? If, doesn't if, that also give you an opportunity for kind of a redo? The reset. You know, <laughs> yeah. kind of a reset. Well, uh, well they, they would they would have to because I mean, Mass Effect, the, the Mass Effect Three has th three or four possible endings right. if you chose a refusal. Um, but yeah, and if they're gonna go that way, the only other characters they could retain are the Krogan because they also live for centuries. Right. Because uh, sorry, live for about a thousand years. I think Krogan four hundred something like that. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the Salarians are yeah. are very short lived. Yep, they Salarians just forty years. Turians, 150. I think humans. I think well, I, I remember. I, I read up in the Mass Effect universe. Humans also now live to 150 because you have to right. imagine that you know, me, yeah, me, modern medicine at that kept age. increasing. Yes, yeah. you scale. could you could keep like uh, well, Legion's dead no matter what. So never mind. But uh. like uh, Ed, I guess could still be around and um, some of those characters. But um, no, I, I mean, I, I basically, I, I often pose this at the end of, if we do like really long retrospectives, it's like, it's like, what do you want to see versus what do you think they'll do? So I can't like, 
Uh, do you think they're going to canonize one of the endings, or what do you think they're going to do with if, that? If they did, destroy is the only logical option. Well, she it, doesn't it, have green eyes, so I don't think it's synthesis. Thank God. Because I mean, um, if, if, if Control or Synthesis, you'd, you'd have the fucking Reapers flying around the galaxy all the fucking time. Shepard's consciousness would be controlling all of them, you know? I mean, there, we're, we're uh, yeah, I mean, surely we're, we're not alone, but we're also, you know, I'm sure there's people who, for whatever reason, preferred those endings. So I have no idea what they're going to do. Um, I, I hope for a divorced, coherent experience that barely kind of, you know, like, oh, yeah, we'll just, you know, kind of pick up where we left off, sort of. Are they, are they calling it Mass Effect 4? I think it's. I don't Is that think tentative title? I think there. I don't think there's a, a concrete title yet, but I don't know. I just just give me like the freedom again. I think that is a good. I mean, Andromeda had a great opportunity for a reboot, but we saw how that went. And uh, kill me now! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. I I just I, I it made me this whole uh, this whole legendary edition made me reappreciate the series and made me hopeful that they can re-inject some life into it um however that may be all right so um thank you guys so much for uh for this episode thank you derek for joining of course Th- thank you bevy um you know i feel like this episode kind of turned into like i you kind of said it we kind of what's the right word like reevaluated kind of what you thought of the franchise as a whole yeah yeah for good sure. opportunity for that no i agree and uh we will catch you guys next time on goddamn gamecube thank you <laughs>